from like the middle to the end on it had me sobbing like uncontrollably and i think it is the most fun and exciting book that you will be picking up this year he's kind of like a daddy i don't have daddy issues okay this video is getting out of hand Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. I am so excited to be giving you guys all of these recommendations based on if you like this TV show or movie, you will like this book. It also goes the other way around. I've made two videos like this one in the past and I just I love talking about books, movies, etc. It's just a nice opportunity for me to gush about my recent reads or my recently watched TV stuff, I guess. <laughs> so not only will I be giving some amazing recommendations in today's video, but also the sponsor of today's video, which is Book of the Month. I am so excited that they wanted to work with me again. That's all because of you guys and for clicking the link in my bio and for supporting me and this channel. I think the majority of you guys will have heard of their surface, but Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online bookish surface made for readers like you and I. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers discover books that they will love. How it works is that their team vets hundreds of books each month and then gives readers their choice from a curated list. So this way you can spend more time reading and less time researching so that you do not have to check on every single website. Oh my gosh, which amazing books are coming out this month? Book of the Month has got your back. Book of the Month is also risk-free, meaning that if you do not like any of the picks that they chose for the upcoming month, you do not have to get one of the books. You can skip any month, any time, and you will not be charged. Little disclaimer for my international followers, Book of the Month only ships to US addresses. I know, it's such a shame. In the previous video that they sponsored, a lot of you guys asked me like, um, but Sabine, how do you get the box then? Because if you didn't know, I'm Dutch, I'm not. American. <laughs> Book of the Month so very kindly sponsors these videos because I have a big US audience and I personally really believe in their service and I think it's just so great. Hence why I'm very excited to be able to work with them. So again, little heads up, just to be clear with you, they do not ship internationally, unfortunately. But Book of the Month does have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. And if you click the link in my bio and use this code, you will get your first Book of the Month box for just $9.99, which is just extremely cheap for a new hardcover book. So the most exciting part, which I will be showing you right now, is unboxing the September picks and telling you what they are about. Oh my gosh, they are amazing. We have Beautiful Country by Qian Julie Wang, a movie memoir filtered through a child's eyes about a Chinese family struggling in the shadow of the American dream. The Sweetest Remedy is a contemporary fiction by Jane Igaro. An unexpected loss leads to a young woman on a soul-searching journey to reconnect with Nigerian family and find herself. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney is September's thriller pick. When a remote anniversary getaway turns eerie, a couple learns if their marriage can bear the weight of their secrets. Then by L. Allison Heller, The Neighbor's Secret, which is a contemporary fiction, a suburban book club discovers life can be more disturbing than fiction when a vandal disrupts life on the cul-de-sac. After a fake relationship generates real sparks, a rising scientist must decide if she's ready to experiment with love. This is Ali Hayes Hazelwood's debut novel and I'm so excited to be reading this romance book. Again, thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. Check out the link in my description box. If you click it, you truly are supporting me and my channel and it means so much to me. So right now, let's go on to the first movie to book recommendation, I guess. But like I said, it goes the other way around as well. Wilson, where are you? So this movie, I actually just watched this past week and oh my gosh, the emotions that I felt whilst watching it, after having watched it, it's insane. So I don't know if a lot of you guys know, but Tom Hanks is actually my favorite actor and I kind of have a little crush on him. I know it's not very common. People usually crush on like Johnny Depp or Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise or whatever mediocre white man. I guess. <laughs> but I adore a mediocre white man as well, like Tom Hanks, but he's kind of like a he's kind of like a daddy. I don't have daddy issues. Okay, this video is getting out of hand. <laughs> 
I just really adore Tom Hanks, okay? He is an amazing actor. He is husband material in my mind. So I'm slowly watching all of his videos, videos, movies. This week I decided to watch Castaway because it was on Netflix again. So basically a super quick premise of Castaway is a FedEx executive undergoes a physical and emotional transformation after crash landing on a deserted island. It's an emotional roller coaster. It's really intense. I don't know if I would have gone through my stay on a deserted island the way that Tom Hanks's character does so much respect for that from like the middle to the end on it had me sobbing like uncontrollably and the book that I want to recommend for this super emotional adventurous read is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. She is one of my favorite authors and this is a book that not a lot of people have read or that I hear people talk about. It is basically the same premise as Cast Away but from a different perspective. So the story is the plot is very very similar but instead we do not follow the person who is missing but in one true loves you follow the wife of the person who is missing and her journey of losing him, mourning him because she thinks he is dead. But let me tell you a little bit more about the synopsis. So in her 20s, Emma Blair marries her high school sweetheart, Jesse. They build a life for themselves far away from the expectations of their parents and the people of their hometown in Massachusetts. They travel the world together, living life to the fullest and seizing every opportunity for adventure. On their first wedding anniversary, Jesse is on a helicopter over the Pacific when it goes missing. Just just like that, Jessie is gone forever. Emma quits her job and moves home in an effort to put her life back together. Years later, now in her 30s, Emma runs into an old friend, Sam, and finds herself falling in love again. When Emma and Sam get engaged, it feels like Emma's second chance at happiness. That is until Jesse is found. He is alive and he's been trying all these years to come home to her. With a husband and a fiance, Emma has to now figure out who she is and what she wants while trying to protect the ones she loves. Who is her one true love? What does it mean to love truly? Emma knows she has to listen to her heart. She's just not sure what it's saying. Honestly, if you haven't read the book, haven't watched the movie, please do it. They are both amazing and emotional roller coasters. Be prepared to cry, okay? <laughs> Something is coming. Something hungry for blood. What is it? The Demogorgon! Then I have one recommendation that I want to keep and try super, super vague because I don't want to talk too much about the plot of the book. So if you enjoy Stranger Things, which is one of my favorite TV shows, oh my gosh, so excited for season four, then I think you will absolutely adore House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This is also a perfect read for like the autumnal Halloween vibe. So the IMDb description of Stranger Things is when a young boy disappears, his mother, a police chief and his friends must confront terrifying supernatural forces in order to get him back. Again, pretty much the same premise for House of Hollow. But in this one, we follow the three Hollow sisters. About 10 years ago, they went missing for a month and they very randomly popped up again and they didn't know where they went and it's all a super big mystery. Their case and their disappearance became super famous. Their appearance also started to change. Their hair lost color. Their irises changed colors as well. And now 10 years later, the eldest sister goes missing again and the other two are looking for her, but they might not be the only ones. That's all that I kind of want to talk about. I don't really want to explicitly point out what I think is in line with Stranger Things because I just, you need to go into this book with it being a complete mystery. And then I think it is the most fun and exciting book that you will be picking up this year. Como te suenan dos mil cuatrocientos millones de euros. A super recent read for me as well, and that is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. And I think that if you like this book, you will love La Casa de Papel. Or if you like La Casa de Papel, you will enjoy this one. You, you get what I mean, okay? <laughs> La Casa de Papel is about an unusual group of robbers attempt to carry out the most perfect robbery in Spanish history, stealing 2.4 billion euros from the Royal Mint of Spain. The group doesn't know each other before they are gonna perform the robbery and you just get thrown into the plot of this TV show. Like the bank robbery starts from episode one. You don't know the backstory of the characters. You don't know whether they will succeed. You see the relationship between the robbers and the people who are 
staying in the bank. It is so exciting, so thrilling, super bloody, and just, oh my gosh, my heart rate during watching an episode of this show went like all over the place. And the reasons for why I think the girls I have been will fit with you if you enjoy La Casa de Papel is because our main character is a con artist because she grew up with a con artist mom. So she has been raised that way, but she has just been multiple girls in a lot of different towns. And five years ago, she escaped her hectic con artist life and she's kind of living a normal life right now. She's really enjoying it. But then she goes to the bank with her girlfriend and her ex-boyfriend, which is already really quite awkward and they get held at gunpoint. And Nora, the girl, our main character that I have been talking about, she feels like she is the only person who is able to get them out of the bank alive. People are being held hostage. They are trying to rob a bank. It's all very exciting, very intense, and this book also kept me on the edge of my seat throughout the whole plot. Only the Avatar mastered all four elements. Maybe what I really wanted was to prove I could do things right. Then I have a book that apparently I cannot shut up about, which is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I specifically love the first book in the trilogy. It is my absolute fave. I think that if you love shows and movies like Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Mulan, you will enjoy this book as well. I think especially the first 200 pages have the most in common with Avatar The Last Airbender because our main character gets thrown into like this private school and she learns about her connection with like elemental magic and that is obviously a very big thing with The Last Airbender. But also the country that she lives in, Nikara, is at war. So for some reason like the war aspect of the poppy war reminds me a bit of Mulan but without giving away too much spoilers, Rin also comes in contact with this group called the Psych, and my mind apparently made a connection between this book and Mulan because of that element. And overall, I just think that this is an amazing series. Our main character, she is ruthless, and she will definitely break your heart with certain decisions that she makes. It is also inspired by real life events that took place in the 1950s between China and surrounding countries. Arif Kwan really did her research while making this whole series, and if you haven't picked it up yet, I feel like you've kind of been living under a rock, but also give it a chance because usually I do not like warfare adult fantasy bugs, but I absolutely adored this one. Eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. Smug smile. Definitely eat shit. And then the last recommendation is kind of like a bonus recommendation because I haven't actually read this book, but the synopsis made me think of Knives Out so much, which by the way is one of my favorite movies. I think in the first video that I made regarding like books and movies recommendations, I also talked about Knives Out, but I definitely gave a different recommendation. And this one feels a lot more like it. <laughs> so Knives Out, if you haven't watched it, first of all, do it. It's amazing, it's so entertaining. It is about a detective who investigates the death of a patriarch of an eccentric combative, com combative? English <laughs> uh, family. So it reminded me so much of Not a Happy Family by Shari Lapina, which was actually one of Book of the Month's August picks. And I really wanna pick this one up. I also feel like I'm definitely in the mood for a thriller soon because of like the autumnal weather. And the synopsis goes like this. In this family, everyone is keeping secrets, even the dead. Bracken Hill in upstate New York is an expensive place to live. You have to be rich to have a house there. And Fred and Sheila Merton certainly are rich, but even all their money can't protect them when a killer comes to call. The Mertens are brutally murdered the night after an Easter dinner with their three adult kids, who of course are devastated. Or are they? They each stand to inherit millions. They were never a happy family thanks to their vindictive father and neglectful mother, but perhaps one of the siblings is more disturbed than anyone knew. Did someone snap after that dreadful evening? Or did another person appear later that night with the worst of intentions? That must be what happened. After all, if one of your family were capable of something as gruesome as this, you'd know, wouldn't you? <laughs> I love the dramatic reading that I did for the synopsis. The main thing that's just so similar about this book and Knives Out is that the possible suspects for the murder are super close family members and that there is a lot of money at stake. So I cannot really give you like a very conclusive decision of like, oh yeah, it totally reminds me of that or oh my gosh, this was such an amazing book. I feel like it's gonna be. I'm excited to pick it up because I wanna read more thrillers, okay? So those were all of the recommendations that I wanted to give you guys for today's video. 
hopefully you will pick up some of these books or watch the movie slash TV show that I coupled with them. Again, I want to thank Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video and do not forget to check out the link in my bio and use the code to get your first box for $9.99. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!